Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience tuning in on your community station, WYAD 94.1 FM, WYADonline.com, but also those joining us online around the world, especially through our friends at iHeartRadio. We're glad that you all could be with us as well. I'm so excited to welcome my friend Pauline Rogers to the program. She's the founder of the Wretch Foundation, Reaching and Educating for Community Hope, but she's so much more than that. She's an individual who's been able to inspire individuals through her own personal journey, but also in the work that she's able to do day by day. Pauline is one of this year's Mississippi Success honorees. We'll talk to her about what it's been like for her to use her platform to make such an impact and let you guys know how to stay connected with her as well. Pauline, welcome back to the program. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Cyrus. Glad to be here. So, Pauline, a lot for us to talk about. We're going to get into, of course, how our audience can be able to follow the work of your foundation and and what you're doing every day. But I want to talk about, you know, your life. I think so uh, so many times people like you and myself, we're so busy doing what we do day by day, we don't actually get a chance to step back and kind of look at it. I mean, what is it like for you just to take a moment to think about the impact you've been able to have on people, not only in the state of Mississippi, but beyond the state border? Well, it, it I, nothing but the grace and glory of God, uh, because uh, my life, I'm formerly incarcerated, stayed incarcerated for three years, and everything you hear about incarceration and the inability to rebuild your life and bounce back uh, is ingrained in your thought process when you're incarcerated. So having got out and on the journey of rebuilding and helping others is phenomenal. And I cannot do this work, do not do it, without giving the glory to where it's due, and that is to the Almighty God, the Father. Uh, And it is joy, a joy to be able to give back, not only locally, but impact people that I have been able to come in contact with around the world. Well, we had an opportunity to feature you on our on our program, our TV show and web series, Cyrus Web Presents, actually sitting in one of my favorite places, Dunkin' Donuts. Haven't been able to be in there uh, in, <laughs> for the past uh, six uh, or seven yeah. months. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But what impressed me so much, you know, after I've known you over the years, and we've known each other now for a while, Pauline, is that you do what you do naturally. So I want to ask you, do you think it's just a part of who you are to not just think about yourself, but what you can do to help others? It's a part of my upbringing. I won't say that, it, you know, it, I'm mindful of the, uh, a portion of the Scripture Bible that says in us dwell no good thing. So a part of who I am and how I am is my upbringing. I'm a church girl. I came from that experience. My grandmother was a devout Christian in the National Baptist Church, in the Baptist Church, uh, and a Sunday school teacher. So I had that in my life growing up. And so I think that part of me uh, came from what was instilled in me and now is spreading abroad. Yeah. And it definitely is. And I want to talk about that because you, you know, even before COVID, we're going to get into what 2020 has been like for you. But you were not only traveling throughout the state of Mississippi, but you were all outside the state and and talking to all different types of individuals, not just people in the community, but also elected officials. I want to talk about the boldness it takes because, as as you mentioned, you know, you know the plight that so many people have gone through. What is it like for you to know that you can be in a room with any and everybody and to be able to share the message that is so near and dear to your heart? It's humbling to know that I can be in the room, but it's also the flip side of the coin. It's all joy on one side, and it's all heartache on the opposite side of that coin because Mississippi being the Jim Crow deep south part of Mississippi is what it is. That's not the shit. It's what it is. I'm a beloved Mississippian. But the root of the history of Mississippi is, is tough. And we're one of the last states 
to penetrate that toughness. We just, in the year 2020, changed the flag that had had people, whether you own it or not, we are the uh, last state in the Union to remove a Confederate flag. Um, and so that's the deep, the deep root. So it's been hard to penetrate because of that perspective with people and laws that are in place, not necessarily people, because uh, there are people on both sides that are absolutely that I work with that are Confederate believers, non on both sides. But because of the history and the makeup of how the state is, it's, it's made the work hard. But the flip side, going back, it is beautiful to have the opportunity to be able to sit in the room with people who believe in the work that we're doing, even in being in a place that's even tougher to do it. Because Mississippi is number two in the nation with mass incarceration. And if you look at it per capita, it would make us number one globally with mass incarceration. So there is a huge issue uh, around the issue that we work in. Right. So I want to talk about – there's a couple things uh, that I want to make sure we get in this conversation, Pauline. Uh, but I want to, before we do that, talk to us about – I mentioned the foundation at the beginning of this. Talk to us about the foundation and how it began and the actual mission of the foundation. The foundation is Reaching and Educating for Community Hope. We use the acronyms R-E-C-H, pronounced REACH. There's no A, but it's pronounced REACH. Oh, and our mission is to help individuals and families impacted by crime and incarceration. And the vision of that mission is to be a thriving and sustainable uh, community inclusive of individuals impacted by crime and incarceration. Oh, and it came about because of my incarceration. When I was incarcerated, there were hundreds of people uh, uh and that's no ex exaggeration in number, that had been paroled while in prison but were still in prison simply because they did not have an address to go to, mm -hmm. whether that was the family would not receive them back or all the family members had died off, if they ever had family, uh, extended family, that had died off while they were incarcerated, and they simply couldn't get out after having made parole. And that still stands the case to this day. So my being there, seeing this problem, I thought, i got to do something about this. And that process, thought process of me goes back to my upbringing with my grandmother. Uh, and so that's what this work was birthed out of, uh, a vision, seeing the problem, living the problem uh, firsthand. And the people... In this work, I've come to the knowledge, realization, and conclusion that the best people to deal with this type of work are those that have been most impacted with the lived experience. Um, and so that's how the work came about and was and was birthed out of it. And, of course, the name didn't have criminal justice reform models to go to over 30 years ago so it was just beating at the straw of, okay, what does this look like? Uh, and so the organization was started by my husband and myself. Uh, my husband, who was formerly incarcerated, the 16 years of incarceration, was locked up at the age of 14, sent to prison at 15, and got out when he was 31. So it became a personal mission and lifelong thing for us. And so... Oh, uh, that's how the REACH Foundation uh, came about. We do Thank transitional sharing, housing. Um, we do uh, uh, life skills training. We do camps to children of incarcerated parents, back to school bash. We have a slogan called Help in the House that we do all of our um, outreach work around. And our camp for children is called Fit for Life. And in that Fit for Life camp, the children leave with how will you be spiritually fit, financially fit, socially fit, you know, all of that, how do you fit in life. And it's from their own perspective, whether they want to write it out or collage it out uh, via pictures. Um, and we have a letter campaign. We have a, a civic engagement, voter 
campaign, and of course, in the midst of this uh, COVID, uh, we've been doing a lot of outreach around uh, COVID, which is basic needs. And so we've had to try to meet needs as best we can and help right. do the work. Because even in the housing, with the CDC guidelines around the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic uh, era, we have to be obedient to the CDC guidelines with wearing masks, social distancing, hand washing, sanitizing stations, and because you're in a, it's not our our facility is not a dorm style. It's a home, and right. so we can't take as many people as normally. So we and then to travel, you know that's how we make uh, money. That's how we get known. That's how we're able to sit at the table with others because it's through travel, and that has right. been gravely hindered for the world. Um, and so it definitely trickles down. If, if it gets to bigger people, the the smaller people, you know, don't stand a chance. Right. You know, some of them, except for the grace of God, that uh, we're able to survive. Wow. Well, it's amazing what you all have been able to do. And not only are you able to be active in the community, you also are active online. Pauline, we're going to get into that. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, though, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome Pauline Rogers to our program today. Uh, she was talking with us not only about the work of the REACH Foundation, but also what it's been like for her personally to be able to do work that she's passionate about and to see the response. Pauline, one of the things that struck me that you do on social media, and while Everyone uses social media differently. I mean, you share with us a lot of the work you're doing, but also updates. Um, at the time we're having this conversation, recently you posted about the 77th death uh, of an incarcerated individual in Mississippi uh, prisons. Um, why has that been important for you to make sure that you are sharing that information, and that was since December 29th of um, of last year, I think, uh, the 77th death recently happened. Why has that been important for you to share that and to, to keep that information in the forefront? It's important because if we do, they're human, and all of us are better than our worst mistakes ever made, all of us. And the same Christ, Jesus Christ, that shed his blood for whomever we think is without sin, whoever that person may be, from Buckingham Palace to the White House to the Queen's Palace, King's Palace, to the crack house or the homeless, Jesus Christ died for them all. And we, if you ever get to the place, if we ever as a society get to the place where people don't matter, people won't matter. And it will continue a rise and escalation of the devaluing, the desensitization, the dehumanization of a life. And that they deserve, not everybody was sentenced to a death sentence, but yet there are a lot of them dying. So it is very important, just like 9-11 uh, was important uh, to never forget uh, the tragedy that had happened and that everybody in prison, although they were charged as guilty in a court of law, the law sometimes has not had all of the information or the information has been tainted or twisted. And so because right. these people are human, they have families, and the family, to dehumanize them and not acknowledge it is to send us the entire loved one's family to prison. It's just like the person that went in, in Charlotte and, and, and killed those people in the church. Well, his family didn't do it. That was that one individual. So not to even recognize him if it were him in that position, would to be to take on that same hatred, that same disdain uh, for his family, anybody that would be associated with, him. and that there needs to be some changes. It's not just it's, it's not just coming to to die like that. There is something that is lacking in the system 
prison system that needs to be there. So that's the main reason that we feel the need to keep it highlighted, that they have a name, that they were yeah. a person. Right. So true. And I, I totally, totally agree with that. I mentioned, Pauline, you're one of our honorees this year for Mississippi Success. So we've had the privilege of featuring you in Mississippi Success uh, magazine as well. And, and I think, too, you know, from the time you and I first met each other through a mutual friend, Glenda Hunter, you know, it, it has always just impressed me about your desire to be able to help. Even I remember, and I've mentioned to you before, the thing that stuck out to me the first time we met is, you know, you saying to me, if there, you know, if you need help doing anything, you let me know. Um, and, and I think that kind of attitude is so necessary today. Is that what you hope more people realize, that they can do their part to help others no matter where they are? Absolutely. Generosity, gratitude, thankfulness, love, sharing, and caring does a whole lot more than uh, selfishness, uh, hatred, and all of the opposites, absolutely. Caring and sharing, and that's what it's about. And in the midst of this pandemic, Cyrus, we have been all put to the place where, okay, you didn't do it on your own. Now some of us are forced to love our neighbors, remember our neighbors as ourselves. Remember those in prison as though in prison yourself with them. So we've been thrust into a place of remember because whether we like it or not, we don't know where the next tragedy occur in California. I mean, you can't run from fire. Fire consumes. But there are people that are on top of the pandemic, lost homes and everything to fires, floods, earthquakes. Right. We just keep going on. So we we – we're in a place that we need one another, and it's a sad place that we are forced, and even in force, some of us will still miss it. So it's best to do it willingly. Yeah. Gratitude such a great point. Willingly. Yeah, such a great point and such a great reminder, I think, for all of us. So um, we, we've talked about COVID. We've both mentioned it here, Pauline. Um, how has that impacted what you're doing? Because I see you're still out there active. Uh, you're still out there making a difference, but how has that impacted the the scope of what you're doing? Tremendously, because we can't gather in the crowds uh, like we do, although we've gathered in some crowding uh, to try to be able to meet needs and assist where we could, whether it was through drive through uh, the ability to generate revenue, the ability to gather with volunteers or other meetings that we're engaged. It has impacted it tremendously. Um, But even in the impact, uh, we've been able to sustain. And then even with the people that are coming out of prison, case managers are not as quick. They're not doing the quicker. We had a quicker turnaround in people being released from prison prior to COVID than we are now. It's like, okay, did the sentence get stopped? It's like people have been paroled. We've been waiting on two people to come in the house, and for whatever reason, that has been halted. We've not been able to talk to case managers. So it's impacted it from every perspective that you can. There's a decrease in revenue and an increase in expenses, increase in food expenses. Cleaning supplies, because these are the things you have to stay on top of now. Oh, so it's, we have to be really creative. Technology-wise, uh, we're having to learn new programs, teach new programs. Uh, one of our volunteer programs, we're trying to now figure out what does our volunteerism look like virtually. Um, and I got, you know, the kids are back in school, college kids, Jackson State University, is one of our community, we're a community partner with them, so their students call us for their volunteer hours. And so they've been calling, so I'm having to think of uh, what does our virtual volunteerism look like now. So it's very challenging in the midst of uh, COVID. 
Okay. So then the important question then is for all that you do, what can we do to help? What can we as a community do, Pauline, to help reach and you do the work that you're committed to doing? You support us. We need financial support. Uh, the volunteerism, we need it. Um, and then those that know what we don't know, like uh, you were talking about my visibility with social media. Well, I've learned a lot from Cyrus Webb <laughs> on uh, cause Twitter. I never would have gone and used, like, you need a visibility on Twitter. And I was like, I don't need another social thing to do. <laughs> but it's, necess- it's necessary, and I'm thankful for it because we had that conversation prior right. to COVID without right. knowing that the pandemic was coming. So right. I'm thankful for that, that I got in the game before beforehand. Um, so the, the community can support us. We have a website, www.rechfoundationms.org, uh, where they can go on and support us, fill out a volunteer form, um, our biggest thing right now is we've got to have a warehouse uh, space. Um, and, of course, we're going to do a campaign around that on social media. We found the building, and I tell you, Cyrus, that building is uh, $4.2 million. Uh, and you're talking to this little poor Mississippi girl who need a $4.2 million building. Uh, but it is very necessary uh, for the building, but that building – uh, we already have companies that said they would come and and stop the building once we get it. So we have uh, been thrust into we need that we need a facility, and uh, that facility will also be able to staff people. And the goal is to use people who have criminal records, felony convictions, to be able to work the warehouse on a daily basis, so that we're not doing one big event where it's a daily occurrence of meeting the needs of people where their needs are, and in particular those who are coming out of incarceration. So that's yeah. one big – the first way to support, of course, is prayer. We could not do this without the covering of prayer, and everything else is secondary to that. Well, uh, we're so glad that we were able to have you on, uh, Pauline, and definitely encourage our audience. If you don't mind, Pauline, give them that website again, please, how they can be able to contact you. Our website is www.rechfoundationms.org, or you can call us at 601-918-2970. Well, Pauline, I'm so proud of you. You know, we have nothing but love for you and respect for the work that you're doing. Uh, congratulations on being one of our Mississippi Success honorees for 2020. And it goes without saying, you are welcome back here anytime. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you so much, Cyrus, for all you do and how you make others, how you elevate and uplift others, and myself and Reach being some of those others. Thank you. Well, look, the pleasure is definitely all mine. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live.